Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about how to become a model and just a little background about my story and how I got started. So if you're interested in becoming a model or if you know somebody who's interested in modeling, share this video with somebody who you think might benefit from it. So I have my notes right in front of me. Feel free to grab a paper and pencil to take your notes and I'm going to go ahead and get started. So there's three main ways that you can get started with modeling. So first is submissions. You can submit your photos to different agencies through their website. Um, the next one is attending open calls in person. And the third one is getting scouted and basically like I was. So that, um, that comes with just being in the right place at the right time. So let's say like crowded places, amusement parks, malls, concerts, things like that. So in 2004, I was nine years old and I got scouted by my amazing agent who I'm still in contact with through uh, to this day. And um, I was at Castle Park. So that's how, you know, this all got started. And shortly after, I took some digitals, um, shot some photo shoots, you know, to kind of get my book prepared and ready. In 2005, I got signed with Next Model, so um, I was 10 years old then. And in 2008, I just turned 13 and I got signed with Ford Models. And so my modeling niche, and I'll kind of explain what that is a little bit later, my modeling niche um, became runway, uh, print, and catalog work. So some of the, the main um, gigs that I had booked at the time were Guest Kids. I think that was my first modeling gig. So Guest Kids, um, Ashley Page, Mercedes Benz Fashion Show. That was my first fashion show. Teen Magazines. You guys remember Teen Magazine? Um, I don't know if they still have that, have it out right now. But yeah, so it was Teen Magazine, um, Forever 21 Prom Edition. Teen Vogue fashion show at Huntington Beach. This is in 2008. Um, Who, What, Where. This is like an online um, clothing series at the time. And JC Penny, where I appeared like in the store and then online as well as the catalogs. So those are like the, the main, you know, gigs that I had booked and that were really exciting to me. Um, and where I'm at today, right now I'm doing commercial modeling, so I'll also explain uh, what that entails. And I'm signed with Daniel Hoff Agency, and I actually got scouted on Instagram by um, an amazing agent as well from Daniel Hoff, so that's what I'm doing today. Okay, so how you can become a model. So the first step is to discover your niche. So what what's a category um, that you're most interested in? So there's 14 main types of modeling categories that I'm going to explain today. Now, which one are you more interested in as well as which one does your body, um, your body frame naturally fit into, if that makes any sense. So the first one is runway. So typically they're tall, slim, lean. Um, typically the height is Five, nine or or over and this is mainly for women I'm talking about um, yeah the stats I have are mainly on, on women but uh, yeah so the, the height is is typically five nine or taller slim in size um, they have an edgy look kind of a rare beauty um, something unique whether it's it's freckles full lips uh, <laughs> you know, some, um, a chiseled draw structure, something unique and rare um, in their facial structure. Um, runway models also, you'll see them working with top designers and, you know, getting flown to Paris, London, um, you know, some shows, shows in LA, you know, uh, you know, all over the world. So they'll work with these top designers. And the second one is editorial slash fashion. So they're also tall, slim, typically lean, and 5'9 and above, typically. I have seen, you know, models that were, um, that were under 5'9 who have done runway and editorial as well. So don't let these uh, requirements limit you, per se. 
you know, um, and I'll talk about later how agencies look for the full and complete package in a model, so not just the outer appearance. But typically, they're also 5'9". Um, editorial, you'll normally see them in magazines, so like Vogue, um, Elle, uh, things like that, and they also work with designers as well. The third type of modeling is commercial, so that's what I'm doing. Um, any age, any size, height, normally non-high fashion brands um, can be edgy, they have a relatable look um, to them depending on um, the client and the type of product that they're trying to sell. Normally seen in ads, billboards, um, television, social media, selling a product. A lot of times they'll be acting or acting with no words, you know, just to kind of sell the product. So, um, like I was explaining, the look is relatable to the target audience and they can be edgy. Okay, the fourth is glamour. So, glamour is normally categorized by the type of posing that's being done. So think like alluring, sex appeal, you know, maybe, uh, you know, touchy on the face, on the body, things like that. Um, think pinup, for example. Um, they typically have a male audience and a kind of like glammed up type of thing. So that's what glamour would be. The fifth type is plus size models. So typically they don't go by measurements, but they'll go by size. So in the modeling world, plus size is normally considered size 12 and up. Um, a lot of times they're seen in commercials catalogs, media. Nowadays, they're seen everywhere. There's actually a lot of um, supermodels that are considered plus size in the modeling world that are actually up and running that are becoming supermodels. So that's very, um, times are really changing today. So that's actually really good. The more variety that, um, the more, we're seeing a lot more variety in today's society. And let's see, the sixth type of modeling is petite. So those, they're normally 5'7 and below typically, and they'll model um, smaller sizes of clothes. The seventh type is child, child modeling. So typically um, age 12 and under is considered a child in the modeling world. Uh, they can be any height, um, typically any size, and a big personality is a plus because clients want to see how how well um, the child can like get along with producers. Uh, well, that's like for commercials and you know acting and stuff like that. But like you know the client and basically a big personality, uh, a child who's able to make big expressions in front of the camera. They really really do look at that. Okay, the eighth type of modeling is swimsuit. They're typically curvy in size, um, voluptuous, um, also seen in like lingerie or sleepwear. The ninth type of modeling is called parts. So this includes like hands, feet, nails, eyes, legs, um, anything like that, just like different parts of your body and, uh, you know, well proportioned. A lot of times you'll see them modeling like jewelry, sunglasses, accessories, things like that. Um, makeup, so things like that. The tenth type of modeling is fitness. Normally athletic build, tone, fit. They wear athletic attire, um, typically seen in commercial, catalog, or even media. There's a lot of you know fitness models in the media today, in social media. So. The 11th type of modeling is fit modeling. I've actually done this before um, sometime last year is for like a temporary per period of time I was taking somebody's place, but a fit model, um, they will normally work like behind the scenes um, to fit like before the clothes get shipped out. Uh, to the client, if that makes any sense. So they'll, they'll work in fashion houses, um, manufacturers, things like that. So before the clothes get shipped out to whoever it's going to, whether it's to the stores, um, it can be in a different country, different location, the, um, the clients will fit 
the model and make sure that whoever, whatever size, whatever group of size that it's going out to, it's going to fit them correctly. So if you're pretty good at maintaining your measurements, uh, maintaining or maintaining a consistent measurement, um, if you range between, you know, small, medium, large, whatever case is, like have a good range, then you could be a fit model. Okay, the 12th type of modeling is promotional models. So typically promotional models will be um, seen in trade shows, conventions, live events. Uh, they need to have a lot of product knowledge because a lot of times they'll be um, selling the product and talking about the product while they're modeling with the product. So that's very, very important. And as far as personality goes, they look for an outgoing personality, somebody who's friendly, who's able to engage with the audience as they're modeling with the product. So things like that is very important for a promotional model. The 13th type of modeling is mature modeling. So this age range is usually between the age of 30 to 90 years old. And they can be seen in like commercials, um, catalogs, things like that. So once again, like people that are very real and just like relatable, um, you know, will be perfect for the mature modeling and who still want to continue doing modeling no matter how old that they get. Like for me, I still want to be doing modeling and acting even, you know, after I hit 29. So I'll probably end up doing mature modeling later on, but um, so that's the 13th one. It's still a great, great opportunity, great avenue. Okay, 14th type of modeling is catalog. So when you think of catalog, basically any type of like magazines that you get in the mail. So uh, I, was a, I was considered a catalog model when I was working with JCPenney. Like not only was it, you know, for, uh, in the store but it was also like okay in the catalog so a lot of times you'll see them in catalog they're real relatable people uh, have glowy skin healthy hair big smiles and their particular look will appear will appeal to the clients audience so that is your catalog model so those are the 14 main types of models um, so definitely find out what your niche is, find out which types of modeling that um, you would fit into, and that way it'll kind of help narrow down your, your, your journey and just kind of, you know, make things a little bit easier for you in the process. So things to keep in mind. Agencies and clients, like I was saying earlier, will look for the complete package and confidence so don't feel discouraged or beat yourself up about you know if you don't meet the requirements of a particular category like i said i've seen lots of um you know models like successful models who don't necessarily meet those requirements but you know they never they never gave up and they had confidence they had a certain look to them that was very appealing um to that agency so definitely keep that in mind also, keep in mind, be aware of scams. You will not have to pay in order to get signed to an agency. Never, never, never. If they want you, they will sign you on without asking you for money or without asking you to pay. However, keep in mind that you will have to pay for photo shoots, um, any photos you know that are taken to up, printed photos uh, taken to upload your book. Um, any classes, say if you're doing like commercial cl uh, commercial classes, you know, for commercial modeling. Like for me, I took some commercial classes when I first started. Things like that, um, you will have to pay for, but <clears throat> it's definitely an, an, an investment, a great investment for uh, your career in modeling. Okay, next step is to do your research. So once you find a niche, do more research on your niche. <laughs> Um, also, think about your location and then the location um, which you want to be working out of. So whatever agency you do end up choosing, if you choose an agency, because um, you can also do freelance, but if you choose an agency, keep in mind 
what location that agency is in and that you'll have to probably relocate because you'll be going to a lot of castings and things like that. So the closer you are to your agency, the better. Um, and then also each location uh, of, a, of the agency might have different requirements. So the requirements for the agencies in LA might have different requirements for, let's say, the agencies in a different country. Um, typically they're about the same, but some things might be a little bit different. So you do want to do your research and maybe call in and, you know, just make sure that um, they have what you're looking for. Okay. Research also the pay, sat pay salary of your category. So some, type, some categories may make more money or less money than other categories, but honestly, uh, it depends on, on your preference and just which one works better for your lifestyle because the ones that make more money might be busier working models and you know vice versa. So just whichever one fits best into your lifestyle. Also, uh, research kind of like what I was saying earlier like the schedule of the category that you're interested in because runway models for example might uh, be up and about you know traveling all over the world different places of the world you know doing different fashion shows um, but for commercial modeling for example um, I still have a busy schedule because you have to be on call when it comes to castings, but, um, you know, I don't have to book a flight. Like, you know, schedule's different when it comes to different categories, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, next step is decide whether you want to be signed or not signed. So I'll probably end up doing a different, a separate video um, going more in depth on this, but there's freelance and then there's sign. So freelance, <laughs> long story short, is basically being a model working for yourself and having representation, being signed with an agency. Um, basically, they will handle the business side of the modeling for you. Um, agencies will get commission uh, for the jobs that you do book. The percentage of the commission does vary um, between 10 to 20 percent, so that also depends on the agency. So just keep those two things in mind also. Now I'm going to list out a few agencies, either just a few, there's a whole lot of tons of agencies out there um, in the world, um, possibly even in your location. So once again, you just have to do your own research, but these are just a few of the top modeling agencies that I want to share with you. And most agencies represent different divisions, so one agency can represent um, runway, print, uh, runway, print, and fitness, you know, like three different divisions, so it just depends. So there's Wilhelmina, Ford, Next, LA, New Models, Elite Models, IMG, Vision Models, Photogenics, and then you have your commercial modeling agencies or talent. Um, so Daniel Hoff, which is the one I'm with, CESD and NTA talent. So those are, it's kind of like your brief list of agencies um, right there and etc. <laughs> okay, so the next step after you've figured out your niche, after you've done your research and figured out you know, whether you want to do freelance or have representation. And then after you figured out which agency you want to possibly be a part of, then you want to decide if, um, decide to either attend open calls or go through submissions. So not every agency is going to have an open call. Most agencies will have submissions, uh, but not everyone will have an open call. So what you want to do for sure is take some digitals. Take some digitals for submissions um, and then say if you uh, submit and you go to an open call, that way you'll have the same digitals at hand. So some tips for digitals, they do not have to be professional. You can, I mean, you can use a professional camera, but you can also use like your, your iPhone or your iPad, something like that. Have somebody take it for you, or if you have 
any electrical remote thingy, <laughs> do that. So make sure they're not a selfie, take it from afar. So they don't have to be professional, but they do have to be clear. Make sure it's a simple background. It could be white, don't make it black. <laughs> um, it could be brick, you know, something simple. I prefer white, that way you're the one that's standing out in the picture. Um, natural lighting is preferred because natural lighting just seems to hit us all just in the right areas, you know, show our bone structure, everything. So natural light is the best. So my favorite time to take to take pictures is a little bit before sunset. Uh, I think that's golden hour. A little bit, yeah, a little bit before sunset because the sun isn't casted directly down on you but it's kind of like boom just like lights you up so um, so yeah natural lighting and you want to take at least three three different um, three different sizes of photos so a close-up of your face like a neutral expression mid length so from up here to about your waist length and then a full body length so just something simple natural pose straight maybe a little bit to the side okay so three main three main digitals you want to wear preferably all black um, form-fitting attire with high heels so for me I like to wear like a black tank top um, maybe a couple of them hair up or hair out you know just hair up to show your bone structure but hair out just to show like your raw self and yeah and maybe like some black jeans or dark jeans yeah dark jeans and then some black high heels okay as far as makeup little to no makeup so what I'm wearing right now I have a little bit more makeup but I'm not going anywhere <laughs> so but for digitals they want you to wear as least makeup as possible um, or if you do wear makeup make sure it looks as natural as possible because they want to see you as a canvas once you actually start booking gigs and booking uh, booking shows and things things like that then um, they'll put their own makeup on you they'll do your hair the way they like it to but they wanted to see you as a blank raw canvas just how you are so little to no makeup and like I was mentioning, natural, relaxed poses. So that's basically it for digitals. Okay, now for an open call. If you decide to go to an open call, uh, have a book with you just in case. It doesn't have to be an actual modeling agency book. You can bring your iPad um, with your portfolio photos on it. You can bring like a, a, a small ringed binder. Um, a thin notebook, uh, not notebook, folder uh, with, you know, your photos in there. So just something simple to just keep your stuff together. Um, with that, bring any previous modeling work that you've done, something that you're proud about, because they might ask you questions. So something that, you know, you're, you're proud to talk about and proud to show, you know, because you're, you want to put your best foot forward and, you know, you, um, you want to be proud about what you talk about, you know, to them because they're going to ask you some questions. So if not, if you don't have any previous work and if you're just starting out, then bring those digitals that you took just in case. And a lot of times, even if you bring your own digitals, they still might take their own digitals of you there while you're at the open call. So just however you were dressed in while taking those digitals, make sure you're dressed in a similar attire so all black form-fitting little to no makeup looking just like you stepped out of the photograph okay and okay these are some extra tips and I'll probably do a separate video on even more tips just going like in depth um, but just like just like some um, quick extra tips so get familiar with designers I would say have a favorite designer, even if it's not a clothing a clothing brand. You can have a, a favorite handbag designer, favorite shoe designer, makeup designer. Just you know, get familiar with your designers and have a favorite because you know 
sometimes they will ask you, so, you know, do you have any favorite designers? Like, tell me about the designers that you know about, things like that. And they want to know that you're at least a little bit knowledgeable about the modeling industry or just the fashion world in general. So do your research on that. <laughs> Next tip is perfect your walk. So you can um, practice your walk using a camera. There's been times I've used my phone and just set it up or using a professional camera or however. Practice walking back and forth in your living room in front of family members. Shoot, even when you're going to the grocery store, somewhere casual, just make sure that, you know, you're constantly, like, perfecting your walk because at an, a lot of times at an open call, you will be asked to walk, especially, especially if you're going for runway, if you're going for even print, um, you'll be asked to walk. And I'll probably do a separate video on how to on how to runway walk as well. So, okay. Next tip is get organized. So keep a schedule with you, whether it's on your phone, your calendar, notebook. I like to use my phone when I'm on the go, but I also have something, um, uh, a planner that I like to write down that I keep that I like to write in that I keep in the house as well. So staying organized is definitely important because once you get in the industry, your schedule is going to be really busy and you don't want to um, jeopardize your mod modeling career because you missed a casting or you missed a go see, you know, something like that. So definitely make sure that you become organized. Next step. Well, it's not really a step, <laughs> but less is more and less is preferred. So simple makeup, simple hair, and even clothes, you know, just less is more. Next is be original. So guys, please do not change or, or alter yourself ever or do anything ever unhealthy in order to fit a certain category. Yes, become the best that you can. Eat healthy if if you need to work out, work out at a healthy, you know, get a healthy schedule, whatever it is, just maintain a healthy routine, but never like change and alter yourself um, drastically, you know, to just to fit a certain category because you want to be confident in who you are naturally and then agencies and agents also want you to be confident in who you are naturally. So just always just be yourself and just, um, you know, what, even if there's something that is, is rare about, even if there's something that is rare about you that you got teased for when you were younger or whatever, you know what, own it. A lot of times <laughs> that's, that'll be that one feature that <laughs> gets you signed or gets you recognized, you know, that thing that you got called out for for being different, you know what I mean? So just have confidence in that and, um, you know, just find ins inspiration, uh, you know, just be confident in that. Next thing is confidence. <laughs> so know who you are from the inside out and know whose you are, okay? Because there's going to be a lot of pressures coming in left and right, oh, you should be this way, or oh, you know, you shouldn't be that way, but you know what, be confident in who you are, okay? Next step is develop tough skin. So the modeling world is very competitive, and the acting world, just the whole entertainment industry is one of the most competitive industries in the world, okay? So modeling is super competitive, and you're going to get a no, or two, or three, or four. There's going to be no's that you get along your journey. But you know what? No's are a part of life. And always remember, if you don't try, the answer will always be no. So you have to try. You have to put yourself out there, um, not in like an immodest way, but you know, just like take risks is what I mean. You have to take risks and 
you know, you have to be willing to accept that sometimes the answer will be no, but you know, it's okay. Last step is to be kind. Be kind to others. Be kind to the photographers. <laughs> be kind to the agents. Be kind to everybody who is around you. And be kind to yourself because you know what? Modeling is a world where, yes, looks matter, but personality matters just as much, if not more. Personality and confidence is so important in the modeling industry, you guys. It is so, so important. And if you're not kind, you will be known for a person who's not kind. So you have to ask yourself in this industry and even in life, like, who do I want to be known, recognized, and remembered as? Because it's really character, um, how you carry yourself, how you treat other people, things like that that's going to carry you further in life, no matter what avenue that you decide to go in. It's going to carry you, okay? So make sure you just always maintain that integrity that you have and that awesome character and just be kind. Okay, so if you have any more questions, comments, concerns, if you want to talk to me about your journey, go ahead and leave it down below or you can message me personally um, on YouTube or my email. Um, I think I'll link, I'll link my email down below or my Instagram. My Instagram is Tiana, T-I-A-N-N-A dot Chanel, S-H-A-N-E-L-L. -L. So you can message me on there. We can talk, have a chat. I'd love to talk to you guys about this and I'll be excited to hear about your journey. Um, I hope this video was super helpful and that it made sense. And <laughs> um, yeah, so go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to this video and I will talk to you guys soon.